our position has been uh, for many, many, many months on your program that as long as crude oil continued to close above $70, which they have, mm -hmm. they quite some time, but as long as they continue to close above $70, we felt that the market would move up first to $78, which we've talked about on your program. And then later, by the time we get into the halfway point of the year or before, roughly around the halfway point of the year, we would be up at 86, which I think mm -hmm. you just mentioned, and perhaps even higher. Welcome back to the Future Show here on the Schwab Network. That was David Williams, investor, forecaster, page trader, back in the beginning of March. He's been calling for higher crude prices for a while. You hear in the uh, clip there, he was talking about 86, and we actually eclipsed that level this week, end of last week, into this week. We've been holding up right at uh, that targeted level, 86, that he's had on his radar for a while. I want to bring him in to get his thoughts on the impact higher crude prices, higher commodity prices in general, are having on us as consumers in the Fed. David, welcome. Uh, uh, thanks for joining us. I wanted to play that first before we brought you in because we're parked at that level as we speak. I mean, crude oil at 86.34 this morning, uh, maybe a surprise to some, but I guess not for you. Uh, thank you, Ben. I appreciate being here. Yeah, the crude oil market, uh, as you know, we have this war going on and many things that while we were down at the $70 level, uh, there were a lot of tensions in the market. There was a lot making traders believe that the market was going to move up. Um, in our work, the way that we forecast these markets has to do a lot with time. Uh, we tend to believe that time is actually more important in many ways than price itself. And in our models, I heard you speaking earlier about models, uh, the $86, $87 level would have to be reached by the midpoint of the year at the latest. And uh, suddenly, recently, the tensions and the growing tensions in the Mideast have really become uh, a highlight, along with inflation concerns and so on. And that drove the market. And you and I have spoken about this many times, that there is news that tends to come around at the points where these uh, cycles, if you will, come together. So it all kind of works together uh, to produce a, uh, a result because the markets are very technical by nature, as you know. David, talk to me. Uh, maybe no surprise to see crude at these levels. Again, your models forecasted this a while ago, and, and we appreciate you coming on the show and providing those forecasts for us. And again, it's sometimes just awe-inspiring how we hit the levels that you look for. And, uh, you know, the fundamentals, as we've talked about in the past, kind of eventually tie into the technicals. And uh, that's why we focus on the levels, these areas of value, these areas where the market seeks out oftentimes. And uh, at this 86 level, I mean, again, maybe no surprise that we reached this level, but you were talking about uh, into the middle of the year. I mean, it's just March, April right now. It seems like maybe a little bit earlier than you had thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now that's a great point, Ben, and it's one of the pieces of our work is that the market is running ahead of time. And what that tends to mean is that if the time that the market would normally be at that price would be uh, at the latest, the midpoint of the year, which is about two and a half months from now, and it gets there early, that tends to be a bullish set of conditions for the market. Uh, it normally also will react to a target like 86 and 87, and we're under that reaction right now. But I just want to make it clear that uh, outside factors like Thursday's hotter than expected consumer price index and other things now are suddenly meaning something to the market. So it's funny, you know, again, we've spoken about this many times about how the news and these uh, technicals work together. But generally speaking, because price is running ahead of time, aside from the typical reaction that we would get off of this, uh, the market is more bullish than normal because it got here quicker than it normally would. I hope that I think that probably makes some sense. Quickly, if we could pull this chart here, uh, this is a good look at where we are relative to the 50, the 200-day moving average. Crude oil has been holding above both as we've come off the lows from earlier this year. Sharp move up and through the $80 levels held. We build momentum, sideways consolidation, a very healthy 
uh, uh, situation playing out for the Bulls here and the fact that we're through the middle of the range that we established last year now or over the last year, it actually opens up a door for a retest of this 95 level. You know, I, I'm reminded of, you were talking about again when you, you mentioned these eight, the 86 level and you were talking about that back in March, that clip that we played. You were talking about some of the uh, uh, geopolitical events, the Middle East tensions you mentioned at the top of the discussion here today. I'm reminded back in July of last year where it was the energy uh, Saudi energy minister who was warning of ouching, right? Pain for the for the bears, for the shorts, I think he said, basically warning us that uh, we were going to see higher prices and ultimately look what's ensued, right? We never really got back down below those levels that he kind of warned us uh, about uh, uh, shorting at and kind of projected. So where do we go from here, David? Well, we're working on our next forecast. One thing is that for next week, I believe that, uh, whoops, excuse me, I believe we will have to have a retest. Uh, we're doing it now. The market's trading at 86 to 87 now, but we believe that they'll still be at these levels. You know, today's Friday. We'll be here next week, and uh, next time on your program, we'll have a longer-term forecast for where we think uh, the crude oil market is going to get to. And with this completion in our work, this completion of 8687 is important. The market will normally react off of a level like this, but it is, as we said before, it's running ahead of its own time. And because of that, it's in a stronger position. So we're generally still bullish on crude with the understanding that there's likely going to be a, <clears throat> and continues to be, a few day reaction or a little longer off that completion. David, it's not just crude prices, right? I mean, we started off the show talking about gold at a record high. Uh, I mentioned a minute ago, Arbob, gasoline, prices at the pump have been on the rise. Copper, silver, I mean, we're talking uh, multi-year highs across the board there. I mean, this is all really kind of feeding into that narrative of Fed Chair Jerome Powell. And, uh, and again, kind of tying it back to us as consumers, we've got some headwinds to deal with in the coming weeks and months. Yeah, we do. And, you know, one of the things about the uh, recent uh, CPI, and so on. This has pushed interest rates, which the market, of course, was looking mm -hmm. for three cuts this year. We're not going to get those three cuts, probably. We, we may, but it's looking more like it's going to be later in the year and a less number of cuts. And this is a kind of a sea change for the market as well, that the inflation is not uh, moving down as quickly as they want. Maybe there's going to be a, a, a report that comes out that changes this or lightens things up. But as we get into talking about the S&P, and I'll be free to do that whenever you'd like to, we think something has already changed in the market. So uh, that's the best I can address your question there. Talk to, us, talk to us about the S&Ps and what are you looking for there? Sure. So on April 1st, the S&P made a high in the June S&P futures contract. And it was up, I think, at 53.27 or 28. Okay. But when it moved back below 53.16, by slipping back below that level on that same day, it placed the market in a much weaker position. So this is a, maybe a little complex sounding, but the current decline that we've had indicates a weekly bottom that we think would normally come in on time would be next week, the week of April 15th. But it may have come in one week early. Okay. Either way, that would produce a multi-week sideways to, to up motion. If that up motion isn't really strong, then we have a very larger forecast that I'd like to put out in your program right now. And here's what it is. It's a two-step forecast, and it, here's what it is. It says, should the S&P continue to close weekly and particularly monthly below 53.16, it remains in a weaker position, which will indicate a decline to approximately $5,000 or lower into the third quarter of this year. Now that's step one of this two-step forecast. We then believe that the S&P will close the third quarter above 5,000 and it will have a fast advance back up to 5242 hmm. and it will do that into the fourth quarter hmm of this year, 2024. So there is a decline likely underway. I do want to say this. This is contingent. This forecast is contingent upon the market remaining below 53.16 on weekly and monthly closes. If we were, Ben, to get a close a weekly or monthly, particularly monthly, above 53.16, that's Papa's got a brand new bag. <laughs> that means the market is, uh, if, I may, if I may use a technical phrase. Yeah, back uh, into that, that euphoric kind of stage. Yes, yeah. yes, the market would be, you got it. The market would be in a very strong position 
and really could take off to the upside. We don't think that's the case right now. And we think it's, again, to make it very simple, continued weekly and monthly closes below 53.16 mean that the market's going to move down to approximately $5,000 or slightly lower into the third quarter. We believe the third quarter will close above 5,000. Then it will have a quick rally up to 53.40, excuse me, uh, to 52.42, uh, 52, excuse me, 52.40 um, in the fourth quarter of this year. David, I like that uh, uh, because I've been arguing for a while that earnings could provide the catalyst we need to get us back on track in terms of that run up and bring that kind of optimism back into the market here. But I also like to look at 5,000 because I've been arguing all week that, yeah, we've posted a new low for the month of April here uh, with the selling we saw in reaction to CPI, but we're still well above the March low. And in fact, I looked, that is right around 5,000. So again, a key area to keep an eye on. A little consolidation up here would not necessarily be a bad thing for the bulls, right? Uh, those no. that bought near the all-time high, that's not what they want to see. But uh, a bit of, uh, uh, you know, overlapping rotational trade here is a sign of value forming. So a wide range associated with that isn't a bad thing. Hey, David, appreciate you joining us. Share part of your Friday here with us on the Schwab Network. That's David Williams, investor and forecaster at Page Trades.